Power Automate Desktop is a Microsoft tool for automating processes in a desktop environment. It's really powerful, but it suffers from one significant drawback. And that's the fact there's just limited Excel actions built in. I mean, who doesn't want to use Excel? But the good news is that Microsoft have given us the ability to run a macro from inside Power Automate Desktop, which basically means we can do anything we like. So in this video, we're looking at how we can run macros and including macros with arguments from Power Automate Desktop. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you want to work along with this video, you can download the example file and there's links in the descriptions box below. Because this is a file that contains macros, you will need to unblock this workbook to use it. It's called macroworkbook.xlsm and it just contains two macros. The first one is called run this macro and it just displays a message box which says OK. The second macro is called run this macro with arguments. It accepts a text string as a value and then it displays that text string as a message box. What these macros do is irrelevant because you'll use whatever macros you've got in your scenario, but we just need these so we can demonstrate how they work with Power Automate Desktop. So if you want to work along, go and download that workbook. If you've not used Power Automate Desktop before, it is available as a free download for Windows 10 and is natively available inside Windows 11. So there's a good chance you either already have it or can speak nicely to your IT department for them to install it for you. I'm going to search for it here. Power, there we go, Power Automate. It's there at the top, I'll select that. Okay, that opens up the application. Now, if you've not used Power Automate Desktop before, you'll see this view and we can just click New Flow. There's also the New Flow button in the top left. Let's give our flow a name, I'll put it Run Macro Example, and then click Create. It takes a few seconds just to get everything ready. Right, that's now created our flow. We've got three sections. We've got the Actions section. This is a list of all the individual actions that we can undertake. On the right, we have the Variables section. This is any variables that we have created or that are created as part of using actions. And then we have this middle section. This is where we create our flow. So the user interface is reasonably straightforward. In the next section, let's look at how we can build our first flow to run macros. Right, so let's make a start with building our flow. Before we can run any macros, we need to launch the Excel application. So in the Actions pane, we have the Excel section. I'll expand that and here you can see Launch Excel. I'm just going to click it and drag it into the flow area. This dialog box appears and it asks us how we want to launch Excel. Well, I don't want a blank document. I want to open the following document. And then in there, we can enter the file path of the macro that we want to run. I'm going to click on the document to select a file. Let's navigate to the folder. I'll then select the example workbook, macroworkbook.xlsm, and then click open. Okay, that's our first action. I'll click save on that. Next, we want to run one of the macros within that workbook. So again, in the Excel actions section, I'll expand the advanced actions. And here we have run Excel macro. Let's drag that into the flow area. You'll notice in the Excel instance, it's already created this item that is percentage Excel instance percentage. What does this mean? Well, Excel instance was the variable that was created when we launched Excel. You can see there in the background using an Excel process and store it into an Excel instance called Excel instance. And those percentage symbols are just there to indicate that this is a variable and not text itself. So this is the reference to the previously launched Excel workbook. Now in Power Automate Desktop, each Excel instance can only hold one Excel workbook. So that means that when it comes to naming our macro, all we need to do is to use the macro name. And in our example, it was called Run 
this macro. Right, let's click Save on that. And then after we've run our macro, we then want to close that workbook. So we'll drag the Close Excel action into the flow area. Again, it's recognized which instance that we're using. If we have multiple instances, we can click on the drop down and select any instance we like. So if we have multiple Excels open, we can choose between them in that way. We then have a drop down to decide what we should do before closing Excel. Do we want to save, save as, or do not save? In this scenario, I don't need to save. So then I can add my action into my flow. Right, let's test this out. I'm going to click the Run button. You can see at the bottom that it tells us how many seconds have elapsed while this process is running. Excel is now flashing at the bottom. When I click that, you can see that that is the OK message sign that we had as part of our first macro. As soon as I click OK on that, it will now proceed to then close our Excel workbook. And that's now completed our first flow. Now let's move on and look at how we can run macros with arguments in the next section. If we're building reusable macros, and maybe even macros to work with Power Automate Desktop, then it's likely that we'll have macros that require arguments. Those arguments determine exactly what that macro does. So how can we run these types of macros? Well, I'm going to double click on my Run Excel Macro step, and that will open up the step for editing. In our workbook, the macro that contained arguments was called Run This Macro with Arguments. After the macro name, we enter a semicolon. We can then pass across any arguments that we need to. I'm going to pass across the words hello world. And if we had more arguments, I could enter a semicolon and then put more arguments in here. But for our current example, we just have our one single argument. Let's click save on that. Let's also save our flow. And then finally, we'll close the flow view because I just want to demonstrate the other way that we can run our flow. There's also a run button here on our list of available flows. Let me click that and that flow is now running. You can see our Excel workbook opens up and we see the message hello world, which was the parameter that we passed across. I'll click OK on that and now our flow will continue to closing our Excel workbook. Well, that's it. That's how we can run macros inside Power Automate Desktop. Now, it might not seem that important, but actually because of the way that Power Automate has been built, for Excel users, the ability to run macros is key. Because whenever Power Automate launches a new instance of Excel, that instance only contains a single workbook. We can't open up another workbook in that instance. Therefore, our ability to move data or other elements between workbooks is severely restricted. But if we can run a macro, that macro can then open up other workbooks and we can then move elements and objects between workbooks. So the ability to run macros is key for Excel users to be able to use Power Automate Desktop. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.